hello and welcome to this uh, video in this video we'll be looking into different options uh, for the antennas for receiving uh, images from weather satellites like NOAA 15 18 19 and meteor m2 so i recently found a very good website a very good page on source forge uh, i will put a link in the description so you can read it in detail the main thing that this article uh, talks about it says here that the two main characteristics to have a great design are polarization and frequency used in transmitting antennas uh, so uh, as it has been mentioned previously the poes satellites transmit a signal with a right hand circular polarization rhcp and therefore the receiving antenna must be able to get the data at rhcp uh, so uh, this is uh, the representation of the right hand um, circular polarization and uh, uh, there are few uh, very popular antenna types uh, that can be used uh, to receive uh, these RHCP polarization polarization signals uh, so it compares uh, these popular options the first one is the turnstile antenna as you can see uh, that it is a popular option uh, to receive uh, weather images uh, it basically has uh, a particular kind of uh, connections or cabling that is required it consists of three sections one is the matching section the other is the phasing line and the third is the uh, cable that goes uh, to your receiver and if you do the calculations properly and do as per uh, the uh, the plans uh, you will be able to receive uh, these signals very nicely it is a popular options and one should definitely try this um, the second one uh, is uh, uh, is the most popular one actually and um, the most effective way, way of receiving weather satellite images uh, is the qfh uh, antenna uh, also known as the quarter, quarter filler helix antenna you can see the construction um, at first, uh, for uh, someone who, who is a beginner like me, um, it could be intimidating to look at this antenna and it could be difficult to, uh, to DIY it. Um, secondly, you need to know the theory behind uh, these antennas uh, before you uh, homebrew it or uh, you, uh, you make it at home. Uh, because if something goes wrong you need to know the theory behind it to correct it or troubleshoot it uh, so uh, it it is it is a big antenna comparatively and uh, it is complicated to make it it could be expensive to make it and uh, and last but not the least uh, if something goes wrong you should have the knowledge um, and you should know what to do to correct something that went wrong so uh, this is a very popular option it it can be made and one should definitely try it but it could be a little difficult to build difficult to troubleshoot and could be expensive um, and the third one is the double cross antenna uh, this is also a popular one it consists of four dipoles arranged in uh, the way shown here and uh, it also has a certain uh, type of uh, connections that are required dipole one and two uh, will have the same length and dipole, dipole three and four will have the length lambda by four longer than the dipole one and two and they are connected in a particular way and then you have a 50 ohm coax that goes to your receiver so if you get everything right uh, then this is a very a very good option to receive uh, from these satellites again uh, this antenna looks bigger um, uh, as, as can be seen here in different pictures and also it requires um, you to be perfect in uh, designing uh, these uh, connections um, the last type is uh, also very popular for beginners like me for example uh, the horizontal v dipole antenna now the reason i chose this antenna to start with is because of its because it is very easy to build as you can see there are two elements that are 120 degrees uh, apart and uh, each one has got um, a certain length uh, given here uh, this is also a very good article i will put the link to 
this article as well um, uh, and this antenna is designed by adam 9a4qb so I, as i was saying it was very easy easy to build i can understand this antenna i can troubleshoot it if something goes wrong and it would be a good first step to enter into uh, this interesting hobby of receiving from uh, weather and uh, weather satellites so that's why i decided to use this uh, antenna this article also speaks about uh, why and how this can this antenna can be useful in receiving weather uh, images so uh, it says that the idea is that by arranging a dipole in horizontal v-shape the radiation pattern will be directed skywards uh, in a figure zero pattern uh, this will be optimal for satellites traveling in front, above, and behind the antenna. And since polar orbiting satellites always travel not to south or vice versa, we can take advantage of this fact simply by orienting the antenna north, north and south. Um, and since this antenna is horizontally polarized, all vertically polarized terrestrial signals will be reduced by 20 dB. Most terrestrial signals are broadcast in vertical polarization. So this can help significantly uh, reduce interference and overloading on RTL SDR, SDR. Overloading is a very big problem for many trying to receive weather satellites as they transmit at 137 megahertz, which is close to very powerful FM broadcast uh, band, air band, pagers, uh, and business radio. And in contrast, a circular polarized antenna like QFH or turnstile only reduces vertically polarized ter terrestrial signals by 3 dB. So as the satellites broadcast in circular polarization, there will be a 3 dB loss in uh, this Adams design uh, from using a linear polarized antenna. But this can be considered as most negligible. I highly recommend you read this article. I will put a link. It gives a very nice description of the antenna and uh, the reason uh, that this antenna could work so th uh, this is the reason why i uh, decided to start with this antenna definitely i will build the other antennas also to check how they are better than this antenna as uh, as they claim so uh, as a first step i started uh, with uh, the mmana uh, dash dal uh, software i uh, i modeled the antenna here uh, as you can see it has got two elements 120 degrees apart and it is fed in the center here uh, so each element is very close to 0.5 meters and uh, as a first step we can just check at 137.1 the swr shown is 1.28 right now we are not concentrating on swr but we are interested in parquet plots uh, on the left hand side you can see the bird's eye view or looking at the antenna from top so the antenna is this way this this is the v it makes and we are looking from top uh, here you can see two very significant lobes in front and back of uh, the antenna so let's say this is north and this is south and we have oriented the antenna north south and you can see uh, two big lobes uh, in front and back on the right hand side is the side view of the antenna and here you can see that there are at least uh, three significant lobes on each side um, uh, at 10 degrees the gain is 7.1 dBi which is very good so it has got a very high gain at low elevation angles so whenever the satellite is at at low elevation angles um, uh, which, uh, the signal are the weakest and since this antenna is giving a higher gain at low elevation angles it will be able to pick those weak signals as well going ahead um, at mid-range let's say at 32 degrees close to 30 degrees the gain is 6.4 dbi which is also very good um, and the third lobe uh, also gives at approximately 60 degree it gives about 5.6 dpi uh, but what are the disadvantages the disadvantages could be seen here uh, for example in these areas uh, so azimuth angle is 90 degrees um, uh, on on both the sides here you can see that there is uh, there is a depression here 
which means that the gain will be very low and the sensitivity of the antenna will be very low in these areas so you can say if this is north and south then east and west perfect east and west will have a very low that is minus 4.5 dbi of uh, gain so this is a disadvantage number one and the second you can see here that even these low lobes are giving very good gain values but you can see that there is a sharp uh, depression here between the lobes uh, so at around 20 degrees it is minus 9.3 so practically it uh, doesn't matter really i have built this antenna i've used this antenna i've captured some signals and practically uh, i have not noticed losing signals between uh, these elevation angles uh, if the maximum elevation angle of a pass is less than 40 then i have seen some loss of signals occurring but that could be also because of the tall buildings and the trees that surround my location but there is a room for improvement there are very uh, very deep uh, depressions here seen and uh, that could be a problem uh, at certain locations for certain passes so these are the disadvantages of uh, this uh, v dipole uh, antenna but i chose it because it was very easy to build and i could understand this antenna uh, but how can we improve upon this antenna so uh, what i did was i decided to introduce a reflector which is v in shape which is has also a 120 degree apex angle and which is mounted quarter wavelength below the main antenna so i will show you uh, what i've done with the reflector uh, so here you can see this is the the main antenna and at a quarter wavelength below it so like 0.5 meters i have introduced um, a reflector this reflector is 30 millimeter or or three centimeters bigger than the element above so this element is 30 mm longer than the element above it and it is a one piece so it is electrically connected um, and it is uh, and it is isolated from from the antenna elements above so this could be just one uh, metal bent in this shape uh, so let's just calculate again we will not look into swr much we can tune it uh, by changing the lens and everything what we are interested in is the far field plots uh, so what we'll do is we'll do a comparative study now here uh, first of all first thing we, that we observe here is there is no depression here it's omnidirectional uh, so this is the this is this has improved already uh, but let's do a comparative of this figure with reflector and the other one is without reflector okay so here you can here you can see that the blue one is with reflector so it is already filling this gap and it is almost same in gain all throughout in all direction it makes it omnidirectional very useful uh, as, and on the right hand side you can see that the gains at lower angles is almost the same um, but it fills this gap so the gain in this area is better with the reflector you can see if if the gain here uh, for the antenna without reflector and the gain for the antenna with reflector it fills these gaps very well here also you can see that this is without reflector and it fills this gap uh, with the antenna uh, with reflector so uh, the gains remains the same almost same as uh, the antenna without reflector but the antenna with the reflector fills these gaps and becomes more sensitive in these areas as compared to the antenna without reflector and so i'm going ahead uh, and i will be introducing uh, these reflectors to my antenna and i will be observing the differences uh, that uh, that are seen practically right now i'm getting good images especially for those passes which have a maximum elevation angle of 50 and above uh, but it will be very interesting to see uh, the comparison uh, with uh, such passes which have maximum elevation angle of uh, below 50 um, with uh, this uh, antenna so 
uh, stay tuned to this channel please subscribe and please like if you have uh, like these videos please comment your thoughts and probably in the next video i will show the construction of the reflector and mounting of the reflector and possibly uh, evaluation of that entire um, uh, antenna system thank you very much for watching and stay tuned